Coming up on DC News Now at 4, new details about the threat called into a Montgomery County high school. What we know about the investigation now that that lockdown has been lifted. Then new efforts to protect apartment residents from fire dangers. Maryland leaders signing new legislation today. We saw some sunshine today, but we'll let you know when showers and storms will be making their return. And it gets expensive to watch your favorite NFL team play on TV, but there are savings available. We're helping you stretch your dollar before kickoff. And we're sliding into summer at Six Flags. Join us for a new look at the newest water slide coming to the park. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. And thank you for joining us on this Thursday for DC News Now. For I'm Mark Hall. I'm Tosin Fakile. Right now, students at Bethesda Chevy Chase High School are f home now for the day after a threat at that school. Montgomery County Police say that threat was unfounded. But there were certainly a lot of tense moments. DC News Now's Randy Bass is at the school. Randy, it's been about two hours since the lockdown was lifted. What have you learned? Yes, students were sent home for the day after the rest of the classes for today were canceled right around 2 p.m. This all after police SWAT teams and canine dogs made their way through the school, clearing it of any threats or any concerns before those students were released for the day. And though that threat was unfounded, the fear and anxiety felt by the BCC community was still very real from people that we heard from today. That a threat initially was called into the school today right around 1123 this morning. Police say one of their officers came by and was able to talked to the caller themselves, they found that there was enough concern and possibility of a threat that it warranted calling in for additional backup and SWAT teams to do some more investigating. It's not clear at this point who made that threat or whether they were a student or had any connection to the school. Montgomery County Police not confirming the nature of that threat, but tell us they believe it could be connected to other threats called into businesses across the country. Officers say no one was hurt during the lockdown around 2 o'clock. Again, classes dismissed early for the day and students were able to go home to their families. Parents we talked to off camera say they were glad everyone was okay and they were able to get to their students. Students we talked to say it made for a stressful, scary situation. The security guards started yelling at us to get inside and I felt like really scared. I was like, what is going on? I was really confused for the most part because they weren't, weren't really telling us what was happening. But yeah. Yeah, and I was in the hallway eating lunch with my friends and over the announcements, some like alarm came on and then they said we needed to go to a classroom immediately and find a teacher. So we just kind of went to a classroom and all the teachers were like rushing us in. So I guess it was kind of scary because we just didn't really know what was going on. Yeah, at this point, it's not clear if regular operations here at BCC High School will be affected heading into tomorrow. It's also not clear at this point whether additional security precautions will be added heading into the end of the school week. We have reached out to Montgomery County Public Schools for additional information. We'll bring you more details as the story develops throughout the evening. Live in Bethesda, I'm Randy Bass, DC News Now. Such scary moments there, Randy. Thank you for that update. It is coming up on Forward 3, taking a live look outside right now over Roslyn, and it felt good to see the sun today, Mark. It was definitely a good experience. Let's head over now to meteorologist Damon Madsen with the first look at our forecast. Damon, things are looking pretty good today. We could just watch that view for hours at this point. Yes. It's a refreshing look after all the cloudiness we have dealt with these last few days, folks. Mother Nature finally gave us a break. We did not see nearly as much cloud cover, especially this morning and as we went into the early afternoon. But in that look over Roslyn right there, we have had some clouds roll back into the picture, but that is a minor nuisance at this point. Things are remaining very quiet and more importantly, on the dry side of things and that sunshine made all the difference after a couple of cool days in the 60s. Temperatures rebounded today into the lower 80s for places like Manassas, Frederick, DC, even briefly went up to 81 back down to 79 right now, and we have plenty of those 70s elsewhere across the DMV as we head into the later afternoon, early evening, and this trend will continue. We will be warm but comfortable for the next few hours. We'll continue to see a good mix of that sunshine and cloud cover giving way to clear sky and cloud cover as we head into the night tonight. But today, unfortunately, was just a small little change up because as we head into the day on Friday, our next storm system is going to arrive. We'll time out when you can expect to see the next round of showers and storms coming up in a full look at your forecast here in just a bit. 
All right, Damon, thank you. Looking forward to it. Well, happening today, D.C. officials clearing out two homeless encampments, citing health, safety, and community use reasons. D.C. News Now's Liberty Zavala was there and has more. Well, we are here at Triangle Park where you can see cleanup crews out here clearing out one of two encampments here in Northwest DC and not everyone's happy about it. Advocates say the National Park Service and Metropolitan Police plan to remove about 70 people living in tents in the foggy bottom area. They will clear the public park at 20th and E Street Northwest and Virginia Northwest, as well as 21st and Virginia Northwest and 25th and Virginia Northwest. The National Homeless Law Center, Miriam's Kitchen and other local advocates will be on site to support the homeless with gathering their belongings before officials dispose of their property. Advocates argue the encampment clearing represents a blatant disregard for the safety of vulnerable individuals experiencing homelessness. They demand Mayor Muriel Bowser and others provide real solutions such as increased housing and supportive services instead. But officials say clearing public spaces is triggered when a site presents a security, health or safety risk or interferes with community use. They also say they provide resources to shelter the homeless and offer housing and behavioral health services to these individuals. Meanwhile, the deputy mayor of Health and Human Services says that the encampment was in cleared after dangerous circumstances arose, including fires, traffic collisions, multiple assaults and growing rodent issues. Housing is the answer and that that's the way we should be addressing this issue. So that's at a city level, there needs to be more funding. And that's where, you know, street outreach teams like the Miriam's Kitchen that are working day in and day out to make that happen um, are, are critical. And things like these type of encampment closures are like don't help and actually set that all that work backwards. Now this removal comes as homelessness in the district is up 14% from last year. For now in Northwest DC, Liberty Zabala, DC News Now. Well, residents in D.C. feel more unsafe now than they did last year. That is according to a new survey from George Mason University and The Washington Post. This shows 65 percent of people living in the district consider crime to be, quote, extremely serious. That's about 10 percentage points higher than 2023. The survey also showed those in suburban areas in Maryland and Northern Virginia feel very safe compared to only 23 percent of people who live in the district. And tonight we're learning despite what people who live in D.C. feel, police data tells a different story compared to last year. At this time, the overall number for violent crime down nearly 30 percent. The number of murders and assaults with a dangerous weapon also down. Even carjackings dropped by 21 percent, but that number is still more than 2,000. In Maryland, high-rise apartment tenants could get some better protections. Governor Westmore signed a bill that requires new buildings to be equipped with automatic smoke detectors and notify residents if sprinkler systems are not working. Now, the effort behind the legislation was sparked by the death of 25-year-old Melanie Diaz, who died last year in a high-rise apartment fire in Silver Spring. Our political and government reporter Leonard and Fleming spoke with the Diaz family about the bill. Leonard, how are they feeling? Well, the Diaz family, they're very excited that Governor Moore signed this in the legislation today, and they said if these protections had been in place, their daughter Melanie's life would have been saved. Let's go to video right now here. It was a moment the Diaz family wanted to see Governor Moore signing fire protection and prevention legislation into law. The bill was named in honor of Melanie Diaz. She died in a stairwell from smoke inhalation. Earlier today, I spoke to Diaz's father, Cesar Augusto Diaz, about the legislation. I don't want anybody feel the same pain we feel because I cannot describe it. You can replace, a, you know, a car, you can replace a house, but you cannot replace a life. The legislation also establishes a task force to study how best to retrofit these older high rise apartment buildings. And that's something the DS family is, is hoping for that legislators will eventually pass. Reporting from Annapolis, Maryland, Leonard N. Fleming, DC News Now, back to you. All right, Leonard, thank you. Governor Westmore signed a bill today that would create a new alert system for missing people with an intellectual disability or brain injury. Well, the system is designed to fill the gap for those who are too old 
or qualify for an amber alert and too young for a silver alert. Uh, the bill was one of nearly 200 signed by the governor earlier today and is set to go into effect October 1st. Metro will be closing the Brookland station this weekend and there will be no red line service at Fort Totten. Metro will provide free shuttle bus services between Tacoma and Rhode Island Avenue stations. Metro will also be fixing the tracks in preparation for the summer shutdown. Military veterans in Virginia upset after the General Assembly and Governor Glenn Youngkin got rid of a program to help children of veterans go to school. Currently, the kids of veterans who are more than 90% permanently disabled can have their tuition waived for eight semesters at a pub public college or university in Virginia. However, changes to the program would require families of students who are not enrolled in school as of May 15th to apply for financial aid and potentially, potentially pay out of pocket before using that tuition waiver. I'm gonna send this one to school, come hell, and high, hell or high water, I will, I will make it happen. That is my commitment to them. But I feel like the state's commitment to me to support them has just basically been kicked the can down the road and it really does hurt. Governor, Governor Glenn Youngkin issued an executive directive yesterday to establish a task force to review the changes and their effects to see if changes need to be made again during next year's General Assembly.